third part of the new series, I'm still on schedule, so on to the state pensions. They currently provide for 12.6 million Brits as of August of last year, and they account for more than 123 billion in government spending. They are the largest single expense for the UK taxpayer. And with all of this, and promising in the last week, they are the topic of conversation for today. They are the problem that only seems to get worse as the nation gets older and current political parties seem to only have one solution, being spend more. They call it a commitment to the triple lock instead of saying they're useless and have entirely ran out of ideas. And for those who are like me, who hear the word triple lock and have no idea what it meant until a week ago, it is a commitment to increase pensions by a minimum of 2.5% a year for the average increase in earnings inflation or the consumer price index, whichever one's highest. The way the current system works is it leaves pensioners high and dry based on the whole fact the system is a Ponzi scheme set up in the 1910s by people lacking ambition. But seriously, the way the system works is you pay the government tax, they spend the money on all manner of things known as the national budget, and then when you get older and retire, the government uses tax revenue from younger people to pay a pension they promised you years ago. As in this month, it's £221.20 a week. And this is the reason why the system is doomed to fail. It's mainly on the based on the fact that in 1951, the average life expectancy of a man was 66. Most men would die before receiving a state pension at 70. And my next sentence is going to be a little bit callous, but uh, fuck it. Their pensions were very cheap. We'll put it like that. In 2021, so 60 years later, the average life expectancy of men has increased to 79. That's 12 years at £11,500 a year, meaning the average man will cost the taxpayer 140 grand as a pension. So the obvious solution to this problem is that we start killing pensioners. Now, Matt Hancock bravely started this policy during COVID, and with a steady decline of NHS quality along with rising waiting times, I imagine the government is starting to really love the idea of a winter cold snap. Okay, the fairly twisted, not jokes aside, they might actually want a solution for this, and this is where I weirdly put myself for someone that has previously stated in multiple videos that I am in fact a moron, which is why the idea isn't me, it's more specifically my dad. When I was born in the mid-1990s, my dad was an engineer on a good salary for the time, and instead of taking my mum on a nice holiday, buying a better car, fancy present, hot tub, whatever people spent five grand on in the 90s. He instead decided against all good wisdom to put it in a pension fund for me, tracked by the S&P 500. It would return around 10% a year over the span of a decade. So now in my mid-20s, that account has around 70 grand, and when I retire in the 2060s, I'll have just shy of three mil, generating a revenue after tax of £215,000 a year as a pensioner, which, by any understanding, is a decent chunk of change. If the government sticks to the triple lock, which they will because fixing problems is significantly harder than ignoring them. The state pension will return about 30 grand a year. By doing fuck all, I am seven times better off than every person watching this video who is reliant on the state. Just let that sink in. A fuckwit making YouTube videos in his spare time is better off than 12.5 million Brits that worked hard their entire lives. Do you know someone in their 50s with no pension? I'm better off than and that is my solution to fixing the pension crisis. We put five grand into the accounts of people when they're born. They cannot legally touch that money until they retire. And current rate of birth, which is declining, you would cost 3.1 billion a year and leave everyone under the system better off. And there isn't really an argument against it. The main opposition would be socialists, who all come out and say they hate the city and they hate Wall Street and endlessly shriek about how the rich get richer and the poor stay poor. So why not use the same mechanisms they use to get ahead? It's not like socialists that are renowned for their dishonesty and their hatred of capitalism isn't based off of greed, but mostly off of their own personal jealousy. They'd never lie about anything like that, which gets to the real reason this policy would never get passed. Whoever passes the policy, whether it be the Tories, the Labour Party, Reform UK, Aslan, whoever, by the point it's finally successful, they'll be dead, and they'll never get to cut their wonderful metaphorical red ribbon. The real problem with our politics is as much as people recognise that problems are bigger than any individual, they will never, they will forever be adamantly find solutions that can be put in place before the next election. But this has been a Politic Chalkboard video. If you've enjoyed, consider giving a like, maybe even subscribe, and do come back for more.